Australia is giving more money to Ukraine. More, more money. Today, Anthony Albanese announced that our aid to Ukraine will now come up to $910 million. You'd think he'd just chuck in another 90 and make it a smooth $1 billion. And that is after we've deployed Wedgetail aircraft and up to 100 ADF to Germany to protect military gateways into Ukraine. Here he is today making the announcement. Today I'm announcing that Australia will deliver an additional $20 million of defence assistance to Ukraine in the form of innovative and locally developed industry equipment. Here's the leader of the opposition, Peter Dutton, saying not good enough. We should be doing more. The weak response from our Prime Minister in relation to support for Ukraine uh, leaves a lot to be desired. We should be doing a lot more to provide assistance to the people of Ukraine. Uh, we don't want to see men, women and children slaughtered by uh, Russian forces. Uh. Now, I don't know about you, but this strikes me as utterly crazy. Let's remember this is NATO's war and it's in the name North Atlantic Treaty Organisation. Are we a member state? No. Are we anywhere near the North Atlantic? Absolutely not. NATO started this war, they can finish this war. And anyone who knows anything about the history of NATO knows that they're the original bad guys dating back to 1989. Mostly used as a battering ram for the US to wield its power over much smaller but always pretty rich countries. We've seen this time and time again, but this time, apparently, it's all legitimate. This is not a proxy war. No, no, this is all legitimate. Everyone must be pouring their funds into this. But let's take a moment to hear from NATO's Secretary General outright admitting NATO started this war. Listen carefully. The background was that President Putin declared in the autumn of 2021, and he actually sent a, a draft treaty that he wanted NATO to sign to promise no more NATO enlargement. Of course, we didn't sign that. The opposite happened. So he went to war to prevent uh, uh, NATO, uh, more NATO close to his borders. So you just said that Putin told you if you expand, especially in my region, this is what's going to happen. And then what did you do? You tapped Ukraine on the shoulder and said, hey, want to join? You knew exactly what you were doing and you poked the bear. And President Putin is not known for empty words. You knew that when you did it. I just, I just, I just can't believe that Australia is now being sucked into this. Like, we don't have enough issues at home. Our military is already, uh, sadly, not up to task. Were we to face any conflict here at home, not to mention we've got a superpower breathing down our necks in this part of the world that isn't behaving too friendly, if you look at the Ch South China Sea and elsewhere, and yet here we are pouring funds, pouring our resources into what is NATO's War and those who would say, oh, well, we just can't have a superpower, you know, unprovoked. Firstly, it wasn't unprovoked, but going into a smaller country like this. Oh, you mean to tell me like what the US did in Ukraine? Not Ukraine. Afghanistan, Iraq, Korea, Vietnam. The US has done this multiple times, but always manages to make themselves look like the good guys. Yeah, but you know who's really friendly with the superpower who's not terribly friendly to us at the moment? Russia. I mean, why would we want to allow Russia to gain more ground? It would send a message not only to Russia, but then a message to China that the West is willing to let them do what they want. We cannot allow that to happen. We've just seen Putin over in China having uh, very chummy meetings with Xi Jinping. Their alliance is growing. There's no doubt about that. So why would we want to send any message that we will allow that to prosper?